So welcome to Doodlebugs, everybody. My name is Miss Erin, and I am coming to you from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. I know some of you have been with us before, so um, you probably recognize me. But just in case, I'm going to go have everybody go around and introduce yourselves so that uh, we know who you are. And I'm going to start with Miss Lara. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Miss Lara, and I'm one of the children's programmers at the Marion Public Library, which um, for those of you who haven't heard yet, the library will hopefully be opening in the next month and a half. We have a soft opening date of um, at least before November 15th, but we don't know the exact date yet. And when we do open, we'll have a children's programming room with space for indoor story times and art classes and STEM things. And then just for all ages, we're going to have a uh, activity area with a slide and a giant light bright and all kinds of good stuff. So big things happening for the Marion Public Library in the future. And hopefully we'll see you there in the next couple of months. Yay. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I cannot wait, you guys. Yes. I got to see the building on the sly when there's no books or anything in there and it's already so fabulous i cannot wait till everything's in there oh. It'll be all right cool. let let's go to you guys can you guys introduce yourselves for us my name is madeline i call my name is Malaya. <laughs> Malaya. Malaya's busy Malaya. <laughs> Melina, yeah. Thank you, Madeline and Melina. Hey, you well, here we go. <laughs> and finally, we will go to you. Can you tell us your name? Can you tell me your name? <laughs> this is Callan. Hi, Callan. How are you? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, today's project, I will be using chalk and colored paper. If you don't have chalk, that's totally fine. You can use whatever you have. Um, they all have their own perks, so you can do different things with different art supplies. Um, if you don't have chalk, use crayons or markers or colored pencils or whatever you got. The one thing I will recommend though is that you'll want something to draw with that makes dark lines. So you can use a black crayon, a black marker, a black colored pencil, a regular pencil if you have it. Just whatever you think will make a dark line. Now today's art project and story were inspired by a work of art that is not currently up on display yet. This new exhibition this is part of is opening tomorrow. You're getting a sneak peek. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see it. Here we go. This is called Moscow on the Seine, and it is by the artist named John Buck. Now, this piece, I'm not going to lie, you guys. The first time I saw this, I was like, oh, my goodness, what is happening here? I honestly was just a little bit creeped out. I'm not going to lie. His um, bear in this picture has regular bare feet and then it has people feet underneath it. Can you see that? <laughs> that I thought was really strange and I wasn't sure that I liked it. But the more I learned about this piece, the more I got to like it. So the title Moscow on the Seine refers to Moscow, which is a city in Russia. And Russia has kind of a long history of um, stories and other things with bears in them. So bears are kind of a big deal. Well, this piece was inspired by some illustrations that John Buck saw. I don't know why it's not moving. There we go. Um, these illustrations are kind of sort of just 
generally the types of things you might see if you look at Russian folk art. Folk art means it's something that's a long, long, long time tradition. Like a folk story can be passed down from generation to generation. Same thing happens with folk art. So these are just a couple of examples. And John Buck was looking at things like this and like these. These are more uh, contemporary, newer versions of the same types of illustrations. And he thought, huh, you know what? I kind of like this whole thing they got going on with these illustrations. He was specifically looking at illustrations for a Russian festival called, and I apologize to any of you who speak Russian. This is my attempt at pronouncing it, Maslanitsa. Now, from what I've gathered, Maslanitsa is a holiday, a festival about a week long that I totally think we should adopt in the United States because it celebrates the end of winter and the beginning of spring. And part of this festival is all about pancakes. It sounds like the best holiday ever. So if you look at these illustrations, you'll see stacks of pancakes in there. And there's also even bears. Here's another example of some of that type of illustration. Now, he took those ideas and then John Buck made this. So if you look in the background behind this bear, you see something that kind of resembles those illustrations that I showed you. In the foreground, he put this giant bear. And you know what I learned about this bear? It's not really a bear. It is a person wearing a bear costume. And now I totally get why he has two sets of feet. There's a person inside that costume and the person's hands and feet are sticking out at the bottom. Can you see that? Super strange, super cool. So that is the inspiration for today's story and art project. The story I found is also a Russian folk story. And I love this even more because the illustrator who did the, the artwork for this book was also inspired by Russian folk art, just like those illustrations that I showed you. And you're totally going to see it as we go through. This is called Deep in the Woods by Christopher Kaur. And hopefully you can see the pictures okay. My screen is really bright, so it's kind of reflecting off the book. But one of the things that I love about this is he took that Russian style of illustration with lots and lots of stuff going on, but he also added neon colors. I don't know if you can see this bright orangey pink color. It's fabulous. Deep in the woods. Deep in the woods was a little wooden house. It was painted bright white with nine neat windows and a red front door. It was the perfect little home, but it stood empty, cold and sad. Um, do you love all the different colors he used for the trees? Because I love the pink trees. And there's the house. Let's see if I can get it so it's not so reflecty. There we go. Those are pretty fabulous windows. I love that they're all different shapes. Ooh, so bright. One day a mouse was passing by the wooden house. This looks like the perfect place for a little mouse like me, he said to himself and scurried inside. He swept the floors and washed the windows and mopped and wiped and scoured until everything was squeaky clean. You get it? Cause he's a mouse. Squeaky. Ah. So there's the little mouse in the tiny red door. I love that the top of the house looks like it has antennae almost. That's super fun. There's the mouse cleaning. A frog hopped by and saw the wooden house with its night nine neat windows and red front door. This looks like the perfect home, he said, and went to see if anyone was in. Have you got room for a handsome frog like me? He asked, and the mouse welcomed him inside to live in the wooden house together. 
I love that he says a handsome frog like me. And I don't know if you can see down here who's paying attention from afar. A rabbit bounded by the little wooden house with its nine neat windows and red front door. She thought it looked like the perfect home. So she knocked on the door. Have you got room for a pretty rabbit like me? She asked. And the mouse and the frog welcomed her inside to live in the wooden house together. I wish you could see how bright these colors are. This screen is not doing them justice. They are electric bright colors. So there's her knocking on the door. And there she's going inside. Ooh. A beaver bustled past the little wooden house with its nine neat windows and its red front door. And so did a fox and a rooster and a deer and a red squirrel. <laughs> There's a lot of folks popping by. Have you got room for a merry band like us? They asked. And the mouse and the frog and the rabbit welcomed them inside to live in the wooden house together. They got a menagerie going now. A whole zoo full of animals. And somebody, I don't know why, but that caught my eye. Somebody is a musician. An owl sitting in a tree could see all the animals living together in the wooden house with its nine neat windows and its red front door. He flew down and knocked on the door with his beak because that's how an owl would do that. I love how they illustrated this owl too. Speckly. She looks like a snowy owl. And so did two magpies. Those are more birds. And a woodpecker. Have you got room for some feathered friends like us? They asked and squeezed inside to live with the mouse and the frog and the rabbit and the beaver and the fox and the rooster and the deer and the squirrel. <gasps> the animals felt very glad to live together in the little wooden house with its nine neat windows and its red front door. It's the perfect home, they said. Look at the moon. She looks fancy up there. And I love that now all the windows are different colors because it's dark outside and they have colored lights coming from inside. Maybe it's just the paint colors on the wall. I don't know. The animals were so happy all together. They filled the little wooden house with their singing and their dancing and they played into the night. Oh, now everybody's playing music. I don't know if you can see this. They're all singing or playing instruments. I love that the beaver is playing a bongo. <laughs> and of course the rooster is singing because they're good at that. I like that the owl is playing a flute. And it looks like the moon is playing a flute too. Oh. Look at the woodpecker. I know, look at the woodpecker. The moon is playing a song on the flute. It does look like she's playing a flute. It does kind of look like a mustache, doesn't it, Miss Lara? The animal's music floated through the woods and tickled the ears of a big brown bear. He followed the sound until he heard, or excuse me, till he found the little wooden house. Through each of the nine neat windows, he could see a different creature, each one as happy as he could be. The bear knocked on the red front door. Have you got room for a great big bear like me? He asked. The music mm. stopped. The dancing ended. The mouse and the frog and the rabbit and the beaver and the fox and the rooster and the deer and the squirrel and the owl and the two magpies and the woodpecker all came out of the house to meet the bear. They all looked at each other and shook their heads sadly. No, they answered unhappily. There isn't room for a big bear in this little wooden house. There he's listening to the music. And there's all the critters. Oh no, they're so sad. Hmm, said the bear. Are you sure? 
He tried to get in through the nine neat windows. He tried to get in through the red front door. And last of all, he climbed up onto the roof. The little wooden house began to tremble. There he's trying to figure out, hmm, how can I do this? Hmm, hmm. Trying to get in through the window. Tiny, tiny door. Oh, finally he's on top of the house. Ah. That doesn't seem like a good idea. No, it doesn't. Creep. Heard the animals and they looked nervously up at the great big bear on top of the little wooden house. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Crump went the house. Woof went the bear. No, cried the animals. Oh, said the bear. He dusted himself down. The little wooden house had collapsed underneath him. Oh, no. Look, the windows are not even attached to the house anymore. No. This is not good. Maybe they could build a bigger house. Maybe they could. Hmm. Oh, no, sobbed the animals. What will we do without our home in the forest? Bear felt very sad. He I think the bear could build its own cave. He wished he could help. He wished he could find some way to help. Oh, no, the beaver so sad. <laughs> they had built a house that was big enough wait a minute did we skip a page yep we skipped a page sorry about that <laughs> and then the bear had an idea he chopped down trees and trimmed branches and hammered and lifted and banged there's okay. cutting down trees carrying Banging, sawing. What is he doing? Building a house. The other animals joined in too. They worked and worked until. I love that the birds are carrying stuff, even. Even the teeny little critters are carrying things. They had built a house <laughs> that was big enough for everyone. Okay, now it's a really big house. I want the bear to in still. <laughs> it was the perfect home for a mouse and a frog and a rabbit and a beaver and a fox and a rooster and a deer and a squirrel and an owl and two magpies and a woodpecker and a bear. It even had nine neat windows and a red front door. The only thing left to do now was celebrate. Party time. They're all playing the instruments and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested, I got this book from the library. So mm -hmm. I know that there's a copy of it floating around the Cedar Rapids, Marion, Hiawatha area. Definitely check it out. I love those neon illustrations. So are you ready to do your own version of that bear? Okay, so I'm gonna flip my screen around a little bit so I can show you what I'm doing. So bear with me for just a moment. Can I have? All right. Do nothing for me. Have my mirror to put on the screen. Oops. There we go. Where's my paper? Smush this down just a little bit. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. Oh my goodness, you guys, there's so much stuff on my table. Okay, so this is how I started. Again, if you have different art materials at your house, use different stuff. You can use whatever you want. I'm gonna start off with some red paper because in John Buck's, illustration with that bear. He had red in the background. If you don't have red paper, 
you use whatever kind of paper you have. Totally fine. Oh, I think we lost somebody. Hang on one second. Blue, 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 blue. Uh, red. <laughs> Again, you can use whatever color paper you want. Okay. So the next thing is I have my white chalk. Again, if you have colored chalk, use colored chalk. If you have crayons or colored pencils or markers, you can use whatever you want to. But I'll show you the coolest part about using chalk. So here's how we're gonna draw a bear. Now, if you want to do it your own way, do it your own way. But this is one of the ways that I found that I could do it pretty easily. You basically start with a big old rainbow shape. So I'm gonna start in the middle because of how my paper is angled, but you can do it from one side to the other. I'm gonna draw, you know what? I'm gonna start with the pointy end first. Okay. Here we go. Draw kind of a rainbow shape, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's a little lumpy. I don't really mind. And then I'm gonna take the chalk on its side. If you have crayons, you can do this with a crayon too. I'm gonna to fill it in that way because I think it goes faster. And fill in as much of that rainbow shape as possible. This is gonna be your bear's head. If you wanna do this differently later on, or right now even, um, and you wanna do the whole bear, you can do the whole bear. That's totally cool. Again, this is just one way to do it. Okay, I think I got his head colored in. Now, the next part, also very easy. I'm gonna give my bear some ears. If you've ever looked at real bears, real ears, they're so cute. Oh my goodness. And it's really easy to draw because we made a big rainbow shape. Now I'm gonna make two little rainbow shapes. Do they have to be perfect? Nope. Do they have to be perfectly centered on the bear's head? No. Maybe your bear is looking to the side or tilting his head or something. But then we're gonna color in the ears. Okay. Now, if you're doing this at home with chalk, like I am, this is the magic part. You can make it look like your bear is fuzzy. So here's how you do that. Just take your magical art tools that you have attached to your hand, and you're just gonna kind of smear the chalk around a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit and it'll make it look like your bear is fuzzy. I'm gonna do the whole head too, but be That's very crazy. careful around the line. Just kind of talk around, blend it a little bit. Can you see how my bear is starting to look a little bit fuzzy? Again, if you don't have chalk at home and you're doing this with crayons, just Leave it like it was. Don't try to smear it because it'll still look awesome. Okay. If you have any patches, like right here, I feel like he's not quite dark enough. I'm going to add some more chalk and smear it around a little bit more. Okay. I have a bear. Well, you guys have a bear? On sideways. Sideways, miss. I'm drawing like this ears. flat. Oh, she's gonna draw the ears first. Sometimes it's easier to draw the outline with the pointy end and then fill it in with the side of your chalk or pencil. Yeah. All right. When you have your bear head kind of shape, then you can add your bear's facial features, just a little detail here and there to make him look more like a bear. So I'm gonna use a black crayon you can use a marker or a pencil or whatever you got around. But here's the easy part. The nose is basically, I'm gonna put it like right in the middle of his head. 
basically a triangle. I'm gonna make a triangle. And the nice part about using a crayon on top of the chalk is that it lets you draw on top of it pretty well. If you want to, you can make that, that triangle a little rounder so it doesn't look quite so pointy. But you can make it however you want to. If your bear has a round button nose, he can have a round button nose. If you want your bear to have a really, really big nose, he can have a big nose too. And then from the pointy end down at the bottom here, I'm just gonna draw two little lines for his mouth. Maybe add some you can make the eyes. Go up like like a fishing hook to make it. Oh yeah, you can totally make the ends up here curl. It'll look like he's smiling. And then for the ears, I'm just gonna add another little rainbow shape inside each ear to give them a little bit more detail. And look, we have a bear. Now. If you really want to go the extra mile and add lots and lots and lots and lots of detail, like John Buck did to his piece, you can use, let me see if I have something like this. You can use like a colored pencil or a marker or a crayon, and you can draw little doodle illustrations all over in the background on the red part, just like he did. So maybe, let's see, part of that festival, they had pancakes. So I'm gonna draw a little plate. I don't know if you can see it all that well because red and yellow together are pretty close, but I'm gonna draw some pancakes. This is a big stack, oops, I ran out of platform underneath me. So let's see, what else could I draw? These are my pancakes. Mm, one of the other festival symbols was fire. So maybe I could draw a flame. Let's see if I can draw a flame. I'm gonna take this down a second. I'm just gonna go get the excess off, wipe your fingers off. Miss Aaron. Yes, ma'am. A tip for drawing. Uh, some nice popping colors together is to use complementary colors. You are so right. Can you tell everybody what complementary colors means? Uh, complementary colors are two colors and there's a primary and uh, and a secondary color usually and mm -hmm. the Reason why they're complementary colors is that they're on opposite sides of the color wheel usually, and because the secondary color, the primary color is usually the only color that isn't used in, in the secondary color. Oh my uh, goodness. You're very, very knowledgeable. Thank you. So complementary colors, is basically just two colors that are opposites of each other. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna remove my mirror so you can see me again. So for example, since I have red paper, what would be the complementary or opposite color to red? Uh, green. Yeah. So you could totally use green on red paper if you want to. I liked how John Buck used gold. His is like, really gold gold it's not yellow like mine but it's gold on top of red because that's sort of traditional for um russian art it looks super cool in real life you guys so if you have a chance to come visit the museum totally come visit us it is such a cool piece in real life and it's actually really big it's much bigger than you think it's okay i don't think it's also I thought I would mention you guys, if you have a moment, this is kind of last minute, but um, tomorrow night at the museum, which will be September 29th, 
of 2022. I don't know how long people will keep this on YouTube. Um, but if you're around on the 29th, uh, we have an opening reception to celebrate the new exhibition that includes John Buck's Bear. And it goes from like 5 to 6.30 or something like that. So it's free. Pop on over. You can see it. You can also see the two art collectors, um, Tom Jackson and Joanne Stevens, who are a married couple. This is their collection from their house. So this John Buck piece lives in their house most of the time. They loaned it to us along with a boatload of other stuff from their house. And you can meet them if you visit us during the opening reception tomorrow night. It's going to be so fun. So if you're around, come on by. If you're not around for that particular event, we're still going to have this exhibition up till like middle of January of 2023. So there's going to be plenty of time for you to come and check it out. And we're going to be doing special tours with Tom and Joanne, where they will lead you around the gallery and talk about some of their pieces. Oh, I ruined my bear. I ruined my bear. It's not ruined, sweetie. Now, I should also mention Next month, we have, if you have the flyer for all the doodle bugs classes for this fall, next month, we were supposed to have, among others, a class going at the Marion Public Library. And as Miss Laura said, the library won't be open in time. So next month, we will have a class on Zoom just like this. Mm -hmm. We will have a class at the Hiawatha Public Library, like we're going to do this Friday. Yep. We're going to have another class at the North Liberty Community Library, like we're going to do tomorrow. But in October, there will not be one on at Marion. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. November, though, we're crossing our fingers because I really can't wait to get in that building. Yes. <laughs> and then one other thing to note, if you're paying attention to our schedule of classes that's coming up this fall, I had an idea. The class that I had scheduled for December was about shapes and, and uh, lines and forms, shapes and forms. Mm -hmm. I found a new piece of artwork on display that I didn't know was going to be up until just last week. So it was a surprise and I decided I'm going to switch out one of our classes. So the one that we were going to do in December is now going to be totally different. So keep your ears and eyes peeled because we're going to be posting more information about that, but it's going to be so much fun. You guys, I can't wait. It's going to have rainbow colors and scratch art and super fun doodles. It's just going to be awesome. So Keep, keep, in to, uh, keep in touch with us. Now, before we say goodbye for the day, does anybody want to show us your bear project? I do. Yes? Who was that? I made the stars. I just ruined. Oh, look at this, you guys. That's nice. Ooh, pretty. Callan, your bear looks amazing. hard time. <laughs> It's amazing. I love your bear. My bear, I use white chalk, so I think he's a polar bear. But yours is a brown, brown or black bear, which is also uh, a totally it's a multicolored bear. Really? Oh my gosh, a <laughs> rainbow bear! Rainbow bears. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Thank you, Callan, for showing us. That's super yeah. cool. All right. So, does anybody over at? Oh, there we go. So, Milena, oh, what did you put in the background of your bear? I just put different colored swirls. I put red and orange. I like it. It reminds me of the northern lights. <gasps> oh, good point. Totally. I was thinking like nighttime with stars, but mm -hmm. I like the northern lights even more. Oh, Melon. Not a lot. Oh, did you make two? <laughs> that's super cool I have to show you you know I mentioned that I have that colored art chalk that is super messy to play with just for funsies I decided to try making a brown bear before we had class I don't know if you can see him but um he turned out kind of okay I sort of like him 
<laughs> and that very grouchy bear. He does. He looks like, oh no, I just sat on the house and I squashed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 I really like that brown chalk, but oh my gosh, you guys, it was so messy. Even touching that paper, I'm getting brown chalk on my hands. So as when Miss Erin was you, making well, her white bear and it had its little bear patch, <laughs> it reminded me of a rhyme that I used to say when I was a little kid. And it's the fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. Oh. Fuzzy wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy wuzzy. And I was like, oh, Miss Mar- Aaron's bear isn't very fuzzy. And then you went and filled it in. I'm like, oh, okay, he's fuzzy. Oh, <laughs> now he's fuzzy. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that would have been the perfect opportunity to share that with us. <laughs> Just interrupt me whenever you want, Miss Laura, because I know you have the fun songs and rhymes and stuff. It's always <laughs> worth it. All right. So before we say goodbye to everybody, does anybody have any questions or do you want to share what you did one more time. Go ahead, Miss Molina. My question is, wasn't this co- class called koalas? No, it was called with my bare hands. Oh, I thought I saw something about koalas. It's, That's it, there were a bunch of puns in the description and part of it said something about spending koala tea time. Oh, okay. Together. <laughs> you see what I just said. I'm almost yes. four years old, so I might not be able to join for much longer because Scooter won't be able to see the screen. Can you not see the screen anymore when you turn four? I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. It's really, really big and maybe <laughs> a little bit big. And four. Just just planning ahead, I guess. Okay. You never know. <laughs> never know what might happen. Keep trying. Because if you join in next month and you can still see us, then great. I yeah. hope so. I hope you keep joining in with us. And bye, Callan. Bye, Miss Callan. We'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Oh, bye. next time, in case anybody's interested, next month's uh, October's classes are all about aliens i'm very excited for this one too it'll be super fun okay so with that we'll say goodbye until next time bye Bye, thank you bye thank you Bye. Bye. bye